Slow down. <laughs> I'm in the fast mode and I can't even catch you. Vamos lá, vamos lá, vamos lá. What's going on guys? What's going on everybody? Hope everyone is doing great. Um, hope you can hear me. Let's do a power, let's do a volume check. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? What's up? What's up uh, Zoom Brian Wheel, Zoom Brian? <laughs> can you guys hear me? I had my headphones on, but I'll turn it on a little bit later. But can you hear me at all? Um, all right, cool. You can hear me. Um, well, guys, um, this video intro was pretty cool. Um, don't mind my hair. I have to put it up because it's always covering my front. Um, my lady suggested I put it like that. So, um, but yeah, it's been a while, guys, um, since I created a live because I've been busy with family and everything else. But enough of that. Um, hope everyone is doing great. Hope everyone is doing great. Let me just read some of your comments. Um, uh, let's see. Cool video. Old. That was me. Old video intro. Uh, wrist guards. That's Russell. Wrist guards and shoulder plates mandatory. Wear gear all the time. Someone might hit you also. That is true. Uh, Russell Z Zauner. I'm having to look for completely different riding gear that I'm used to for dirt biking. Yep. Uh, if they are, if they can airbag the Mars rover, mm, Mars doesn't exist. Well, at least not how they present it. Was about, okay, George says, was about to drive out of Home Depot lot, but you be like shit for a bit there. Okay. Um, yeah, guys. Um, you know, this video intro, um, you know, with the cutouts was was pretty much old. It's an old video that I created a while back. Um, that was that was like when the Tesla was a fast wheel. I mean, think about that. That was when the Tesla version, technically one, but it was version two, I think, at the time, was technic was a fast wheel. The MSP uh, M Super was a fast wheel. Um, that's crazy. Like, think about that. 30 miles per hour at that time, maybe, maybe 35, 40 miles an hour at that time. Um, wheels were considered extremely fast. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and back then we still had issues that we're having today, which is cutouts and, you know, wrong way created a video. Um, and there's another channel now. I don't, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like, he focuses mostly on EUC fails 
So I'm sure you guys know who that is, but I don't remember who he is right now. Um, it's not it's not necessarily cutouts that he shows. He shows everything. But it's just funny that, you know, all these years have passed and we're still encountering the same issues, even though the technology in EUC space has gotten better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I say in quotes better because really uh, the main things that we've been uh, focusing on, you know, is like more battery, more speed, better quality shell, you know, stuff like that. I mean, even when the Sherman came out, it was highly, highly like well put together, but we were still encountering cutouts. People are still cutting out on the Sherman, which is a wheel that, you know, apparently beeps at 70%, which is good compared to Gotway, which is like 80%. You know what I mean? So it gives you a good buffer there compared to the Gotways. And it still holds its own against Gotway for a wheel that came out the very first time. But on top of that, we're still encountering issues with, with cutouts. Now, to be fair, to be fair to these companies, um, the issue is with us. You know, for the most part, it's us. You know what I mean? We push these wheels beyond their limit. And then we encounter cutouts. Um, you know, uh, there's nominal power and then there's peak power. I'll have to look into that deeper. But when we pass that threshold, that's what we can encounter. And especially when we do it with low battery. You know what I mean? That's usually the case anyway, right? So, you know, it's just now we know that there are two companies out there who have been doing really well in attempting to pretty much, you know, kind of like bridge the gap between our craziness and what the wheels are capable of doing. And can anyone in the chat point out which two companies these are? Because they, they, they're they worth mentioning because they're so great. You know what I mean? Can anyone in the chat mention um, these two companies that's been doing a really good job, um, uh, you know, pretty much like, you know, preventing us from crashing? in terms of cutouts, you know what I mean? Like give, they give you way more safety, mandatory safety than Gotway, Sherman, you know, does. These two companies have have been on par with each other um, as far as, you know, protection where speed is concerned. Can you guys mention these two? Well, EUC service is definitely one. EUC, you're right. They don't make wheels. They do adjust the wheels once they're made. But yes, EUC service, EUC service is definitely one of them. And what's cool about EUC service is that it's a it's a company that's from us, right? I say from us because they're riders too, right? Right, Brian Zoom Wheels? Um, Brian Zoom Wheels says uh, EUC service. Brian Zoom Wheels. Um, they're riders too, right? Obviously. And it's it's just nice when riders are the ones that make things. Like you have the Clark pad, you have um, uh, the splice guard, you have a bunch of other people out there, you know, who make things for us, for this community. And we understand it better because we know what we want. Um, so let's see what, if you guys could answer the question. That's right. That is correct. Um, Lyac DuPont. Yes. In Motion and King Song. In Motion and King Song, um, In Motion and King Song have been the two companies from the very start who have not compromised on our safety. And, you know, that came obviously at a price because now they're relegated. They were relegated because come in with the King Song. Uh, KS20, and then now you're having the V12, which a lot of people seem to be loving. A lot of people are, uh, seem to be loving the V12, the V11, and um, you know, obviously now the the, the uh, soon to uh, be released the KS20. Wow. Um. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, these two companies have to be put up there because they they they've done a great job, man. But even with them, even with them. Um, I've seen cutouts with the 16X, for example, because, you know, the 16X is one of the wheels that uh, Kingsung has pretty much um, manufactured or developed where it, you know, no, I mean, it, it is the only wheel I felt was close to the Gotway. You know what I mean? Everything was just on point with that wheel. Yes, it was a little top heavy because of its design, but that's not going to take away from how I truly feel about what they've done with that wheel. And now with that KS20, whew. so so th the purpose of this live is basically to revamp, to rehash what we already know, you know, which is safety is important. You know, know your wheel, know your limits. And one way to do that 
is to get to know your wheel and to have a monitoring monitoring app. Now, a lot of you out there, you've already gone ahead of the curve. You have like wrist wrist watches. You have the app, obviously. You ride with earbuds. I know I do. You know what I mean? Because what we've come to realize is a lot of these uh, performance wheels, especially from Gotway um, and, and now um, uh, Sherman, um, you know, the beeps doesn't really mean that's the maximum. That's the secret sauce. You know what I mean? For crazy people who want to go fast. We realized, wait a minute, because back then the uh, the shirt, someone made a shirt. Um, I think it's Ron, Ron World, Ron's World Miami or something like that. He created a shirt that said, respect the beep, respect the beep. And it's true. You have to respect the beep. But it seems like back then compared to like now, because with the uh, Tesla, the top speed was 30 miles an hour, but I was able to push it to 33 miles per hour. Uh, the MSP took it a little step further, you know, with the MSX, the MS, et cetera, et cetera. It seems like Gotway gave a bigger buffer and Sherman gave a bigger buffer. So now those beeps just means, hey, you know, compared to what it was before, hey, you're going to face plant right away. Now you have like, hey, this is the threshold of, you know, of what we say the wheel is capable of doing. But They've come, these companies have gone a little step further and given us a buffer. And what we've done is gone beyond. We've gone, we've delved into that gray area where they say don't step into. And we're loving it. <laughs> we're loving that gray area. We love riding the beeps because some of us are realizing, wow, we can actually push this thing. So if it says 45 miles an hour, chances are it can do 50. And a lot of us will venture into that zone. The problem obviously is, you know, there are crocodiles and there's like sea monsters and there's all kinds of stuff you have to worry about. You know what I mean? Translation cutouts. So we have EUC World, EUC World, man. EUC World, um, among others, you have many other apps. You have EUC World, you have Darkness Bot. These are the most two popular um, EUC apps out there that pretty much allow us to, you know, set up our wheels in a way that will help us, you know, um, navigate through those um, harsh, you know, gray areas that we like to travel in. Cause I've been watching, I've been watching a lot of, uh, guys in, in Europe, <clears throat> you know, in California, especially New York, Chicago, all these guys, gladiators, you know, these guys are racing all over the place and, and, and people do cut out. They still cut out. That's a problem. That's not going anywhere. It seems it's not going anywhere. We're get, we're going to keep cutting out. I'm just very curious to see what I haven't heard much cut out on the V12 though. Has anyone Heard of any cutouts on the V12? Anyone? Anyone heard of any cutouts on the V12? Because the V12 has a beautiful tilt back. And we can imagine that that 40, 44 mile per hour KS20 that's coming out will also be having that tilt back because we know that's something that's just ingrained in, in King Song. You know what I mean? So let me look at some of your comments here before I continue. Um, let's see. Uh, Duvo, what's up, man? What's up? Yo, what up, y'all? <laughs> um, Russell Zahner, got a V12 and an S20 coming. Wow, deep pockets. That's awesome, man. V12 and an S20. That's a good combination there. Why the V12, though? Um, let's see. Yeah, that's correct. Um... Will of New Zealand. So S20 apparently has no cutout. What? Yo, if that's true, oh my goodness, I'm emptying my bank account. I'm playing. If my lady's watching, she's gonna be like, beat me up. But um, but that's that's crazy. That is that is crazy. So where did you hear that from? Where did you hear that from? Uh Will of New Zealand. No cutout. I mean, I heard about the Hall sensorless technology, you know, software that they came out with. In addition to their mandatory tilt back, I'm very curious. I'm very curious. I'm very curious. Where do you where do you get that information from? Uh, Russell Zahner, um, have an M10 to practice in my house because I'm like 230 pounds. <laughs> you're 230 pounds and you have an M10 practicing in your house. Well, at least you're practicing in your house. So that's that's smart of you. And I think it's gonna break. <laughs> But I want to learn how before I get out traveling dirt. Cool. Yeah, it might break. I think so. Um, okay, so thanks, Brian Zoom Wheels, for answering that question. Uh, Franklin Brown, King Song in Motion. That's correct. 
See, we all know. We all know these two companies don't compromise. So that's a good thing. Ariane Consult, you will break your house. <laughs> I know, right? As soon as you come off that M10, your house, you're, you're done, man. You're finished. There are a lot of uh, hills in the Willamette Valley. I don't know where that is. Where is Willamette? Um, Russell's on our thanks for letting me know I made the right bets on rides. Uh, troubleshooting, troubleshoot gaming. Hey, Bay. Hey, Abe. Been watching you forever. Finally bought an EUC, and I'm glad to be part of the crew now. Riding NYC tomorrow. Wow, you're in NYC. Good for you. Um, what kind of wheel do you have, man? There's a lot of people to teach you, so there's no short, you know, you're going to learn. You're going to learn. You're going to be around a lot of people, so you'll learn. Um, I can get a V11, but it will probably break on me. Why do you say that? I mean, I did see some videos of, I saw a video of a guy complaining about the V11's motor. Um, I apparently, like in motion, sent him two motors, and both of them had issues. That's crazy. I mean, that happens, dude. Defects are inevitable somewhere. Uh, S18 can cut out easily. Everybody knows that. Yep, the S18 can cut out easily, but that's that's just an inherent thing. The thing is, it has only 1,100 watt-hour battery with an amazing motor. So, you know, um, the S20 is going to make up for that. You know what I mean? But yeah, you're right. The S18, even when I was riding it at uh, Cobra's Rally, uh, Black Cobra's Rally, I was worried. <laughs> I was I was pushing it, but slowly, gradually getting into it. You know what I mean? All right, Devo troubleshooting gaming. Okay, I don't know what that is. Uh, but in motion and King Song were so boring back then. Yeah, um, I think um, in motion became less boring after the V11. Yeah, after the V11, if you guys agree, after the V11, uh, in motion got a little bit more interesting. Um, seriously, if it wasn't for Gotway. The whole EUC experience. Exactly. And, you know, that's that, I've said this before, too. I agree with you totally. Um, back then, with, you know, with these wheels being, like, maxing out at 30 miles an hour, it was Gotway, the only one trying to push the limits, dude. And if it wasn't for Gotway, a lot of these wheels won't exist. Sherman wouldn't exist. The V12 wouldn't exist. I mean, let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? So give Gotway's props where it, where it deserves it. You know what I'm saying? As much as you guys hate it. Uh David Mitchell is speaking to Brian Zoom Wills here. Uh, shirt man. <laughs> shirt man. Um, EXN MSS 3 3150 watt hour has tilt back at 50 miles per hour. Now that is sick, dude. I mean, I would love to get that wheel, but it's like what, a thousand, like ten thousand dollars? I'm playing. One day, one day. But the fact that like EUC service can do this tells me that these companies well not these companies yeah i'll say these companies don't really care like in motion and not in motion gotway and sherman they could do it too man why didn't they do it if if a guy can do it in his basement <laughs> with scraps you know what i'm saying like that movie uh these companies with a lot more money can do that dude and then research there are people swearing by their msx and others in that class from gotway but i can only get like one and I'm selling other rides to get the other. And that's typically the case. People are just buying, selling, buying, selling. By the way, the EXN I just got, I didn't buy it brand new. Technically, it was brand new. Technically. Um, because the guy I bought it from, he bought it because he, you know, he told me that he lost his license for a while. So he decided to buy an EUC since he saw it on YouTube. And he rode it for about 500 miles. I believe it was 520 miles. So I've been searching, man, searching. And I like buying wheels that are under a thousand miles or so um, used um, for a good price. So that wheel is like close to $3,000. He got it. I got it from him for $2,000. So that was a really good deal. And in terms of like, you know, damage to the wheel, it's extremely minor, extremely minor. Nothing having to do with like shell like being like the you know shelly's broken or anything like it's just minor 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 damage and um and i've been riding it now i haven't ridden it for 200 miles yet but i'm getting there and it looks beautiful the guy took real good care of it so you know um that's what that's what people typically do he told me he doesn't need the the wheel anymore because he got his car back or he got his license back my guess was he's selling it to get one of these new wheels but he didn't tell me anything but it's okay who cares 
I got a wheel for a good deal. You know what I mean? <clears throat> um, Devo, I've heard people beeps, people get beeps on the V12. No, the, the beeps is fine. The cutting out is where, you know, is what we're worried about. More high torque models are needed now that the motor tech can run us plenty fast enough. There are still a whole lot of people that are three meters. You meant meter, meters tall there. Uh, over 120 kilograms. You're definitely in Europe somewhere. Uh, too much invested in life to go faster than 40. <laughs> hey, I agree with you, man. And you don't have, look, you don't have to go fast. You know what I've been noticing? Man, there's a lot of videos on Instagram and Facebook now. It's like the moment I turn on my Instagram, the moment I, and I don't use these things often, but the moment I turn it on, it's like someone doing 100 miles an hour in an EUC. Woo! I'm like, Wow, like it's an everyday thing now. Like I see it constantly. This is good, man. It's it's great. But I all on the flip side, I also see people getting scratched up. I saw some guy lost his whole skin on his forearm, and his comment was, "Now I need better gear." <laughs> Guys, don't wait to get like completely damaged to figure out what kind of gear you want. It's you just got to find a good balance between um, what type of gear to buy and how much gear to wear because too much gear can also get in the way too little gear can also you know cause a lot of damage so that's hilarious man but it's just cool that i don't hear anyone and i'm i'm not saying they don't exist but i haven't heard of anyone saying i crashed this was the worst experience ever i will never get an euc again ever in my life they should ban this thing i i haven't seen it yet tell me if it exists but i haven't seen it it's as if We've entered into a, 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 an area of EUC where crashing becomes the goal. Okay, I've crashed. Now you've got your crown. Stamp. I'm all set. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the club. Let's go. <laughs> Tell me that's not how it feels. It's like weird. It's like I've, I'm seeing people wear this crashes like a badge of honor. You know what I mean? That's hilarious. That's just hilarious. Um, no cutout yet on V12. And this is what I'm talking about. The V12 has entered an, an area of performance now where it's it's been va like non-existent for in motion, and now that it's it's you know upwards of 40 miles an hour, you're not hearing anything because you know what those types of wheels don't encourage bad behavior. You know what I mean? And I think it's healthy to have both. You know, one that encourages bad behavior, and then the other that just says, "Listen, hey, if you want to be responsible, you got to be like me." You know what I'm saying? Like. <clears throat> I'm I'm in the bad behavior crowd though, but with a you know a little hint of responsibility, you know what I mean. Um, the S20 will cut out. <laughs> you know, man. Oh gosh, I don't think so. I think I think King Song has been testing their wheels really really good, and uh, their reputation is on the line. So I don't think they're gonna. I don't think their wheels gonna cut out. To be honest. That's just my opinion. I'm trying to be optimistic here. I just got inspired here um, to a new one wheel. One wheel? What? But my all but my all my what all my ideas fail the next morning mostly. Hey, you sound like me. I always start something and never never end it. Because you know, I keep failing. Uh, Portland, Oregon, Russell Zahner. There's an EUC EV ride every Friday. Cool. So, hey, reach out to Russell if you want to ride and you're in Portland. <clears throat> I did hear the S20 no cutout. I'm trying to find out that info now. Yeah, find out that info. Where did you get that from, man? Is it from the source? If it's from the source, then we could trust you. You know what I'm saying? But that would be, that that thing is going to go out like, you know, hotcakes. If no cutouts, what? Um. <clears throat> Inside spin. Hey, I'm 230 and just got my first wheel, V11. Wow. Congratulations, man. That's a good first wheel to have at 230. For sure, for sure. With suspension and everything. My EUC City Rider. The reason I'm facing over there, guys, is because the EUC World app is set up on my phone and I'm casting it to the computer and I can't cast it over there. I don't know why. So I have to cast it here. So I can't look there. So I'm looking over there. <clears throat> Um, my EUC rider, uh, I plays, I plays around with speed on my wheel. Nothing super crazy yet. I'm generally afraid of cutout and I respect it. 
listen, man, go out there. Go out there and cut out. Do the best cutout you can do. I'm playing. Don't cut out, dude. Don't even look for cutouts. It's not fun. But, but the thing is, it's kind of funny. It, it is scary. It's like you're entering a new dimension, like a different portal. You know what I mean? You don't see it until you cut out. And then it's just there. And you're like, you're not scared anymore. It's like when you cut out, the immediate the immediate moment you realize you cut out, like that, that instantaneous second where you realize, oh, shoot, it cut out. Fear envelops you and then it leaves you immediately it's like almost simultaneously the fear envelops you because you're freaking frightened then you realize there's nothing you can do about it and then it just leaves you right away and now you're in survival mode and then when you survive you're like whoa i made it <laughs> oh man i'm telling you cut out don't look for it but i'm just letting you know how it is because i've cut out many times before um and other people in this chat can probably agree with me or disagree, but that's how I felt. Like it was scary when it happened instantaneously, but when it's happening afterwards, I'm just like, all right, survive, survive, survive. And when you do survive, it's like, holy smokes. <laughs> um, let's see, 245 in Scotland and snowing. Hmm. It was a little snowing here, a little bit of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, a little bit of snow here in Boston. Uh, Lake DuPont. Gosh, guys, if you keep going with the comments, I'm not going to ever start the show. Um, <laughs> I had B11, just don't like suspension maintenance. You know, and that's true. That is absolutely true. I spoke to um, one of the guys in New York who has a shop. His name is Samuel. Um, I'll put his link in the description later. But he helped me out with my high-speed MSP, which we're going to do this thing on. And uh, he um, he did mention that. He did say that, you know, uh, the S18 was a problem. It's not that he couldn't do it. It's just that it's the, the idea of maintaining a suspension wheel, dude, is, you know, it's a thing, you know, you, you really have to maintain that thing, which is why I think the way the KS20 is designed is a good idea because I can't see that inner part. I don't know what it's called, but it's like a fork, you know, the two suspension things that you usually see on the S18 sticking out, like, you know what I mean? Um, the, the shocks or whatever. Um, you don't see it. All I see is the spring on the back. So hopefully very minimal maintenance, you know what I mean, will be required for the S20. So let's see. <clears throat> um, EUCCD, never had a cutout on the S18. That's because you're responsible, man. But the S18 is a dangerous wheel if you want to push it hard. The V11 has suspension that is inadequate for someone like me, unless I sent it to drop to the absolute bottom, then it's gonna break at some point. I ride mostly off pavement. And this is why the S20 is good because of the travel. The um, It has a true spring, a real spring. Whereas the others, the S18, the V11, the EX, and I'm sorry, the EX, these are all like air suspension. The S20 is a true suspension wheel. The S18 was a true suspension wheel too, but this one is a true suspension wheel because it has a spring. It has a progressive spring, which is too, I'm not going to go into details, but it, it has a true progressive spring with 130 millimeter uh, travel, which is akin to like mountain bikers, dude. That's what mountain bikers consider like an intermediate to almost advanced level travel for, you know, spring for suspension. So <clears throat> we're looking at something good here. Um, did I finish reading your comment? Yes, I did. Okay, Russell again. Russell is on fire. Uh, the S20 is coming close to what we're seeing on bikes. Exactly, exactly. On bikes like uh, the Grum, which is small but can t um, can take some capacity. Yeah, I saw some videos of uh, Electric Dreams doing crazy stuff with the S20. Pretty cool, man. And he's not a big guy, so it's encouraging. Um, troubleshoot Gaming. You asked what kind of wheel I've got. An AR. I've, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about this AR. I haven't looked into it. What is that? I'll have to look into it. For a guy who's into EUCs, I don't even know. What I, I, I I heard people talk about it, but I don't know much about the AR. Interesting. Uh, Trouble, you are going to love it. Great wheel. <laughs> yeah, you're going to love it. He's responding to you. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So, man. Okay, guys, I'm going to hold off on the comments for a while. Let's um Let's get into this real quick. Okay, because I wanna, I, I don't wanna, 
Uh, it's it's literally 45 minutes now. I don't want to make it too long tonight, and it's gonna be long anyway with with setting this up. So, um, if you guys have any questions regarding this setup, um, post it in the chat. Um, let's see how we're gonna do this. So basically, the way it works, well, the way it's, it's going to work, <clears throat> is I have this computer here. Okay, I have this computer here. The wheel's over there. The camera is here. I gotta see how. Okay, give me a second. Okay, let me uh, let me go set it up so we could get going. Have your wheels ready. Have your wheels ready so we could do this. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm doing something wrong, I'm gonna put the link in the chat, and um, you guys can hop in. And if I'm doing something wrong, someone can correct me with the link. You know what I'm saying? So, but this app is pretty cool, man. It's the best app out there. Okay. You know what? Before we do this, before we do this, let's do this. Let's let's do, let's go down the little a little road here with EUC World. Um, hold on for a second. EUC World. Let me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to set this up all over again, but that's okay. Stop this. Let me go here. First of all, let I wanted to do this in the beginning, and I completely forgot. I want to shout out some people that gave super chats last time my super chat button is at the bottom you'll see a dollar sign i just want to thank those guys because it does help i haven't used the money yet but the money does have a purpose i will tell you guys what it is later if it ends up building up to the point where i can use it for that but there is a purpose and there's a reason i bought my exn as well so i want to thank re i'm not going to mention the amount because i don't know if they want to to me to mention the amount so i'm just gonna say uh, real talk thank you real talk last time i don't even know if real talk is here now but um thank you real talk real talk always gives money uh, not just me but to other streams as well real talk he gave several times so um thank you real talk uh david mitchell thank you david mitchell um cynthia may thank you cynthia may i really appreciate you guys um euc vibes really appreciate that uh shark shark king shark king i really appreciate that shark king um nyc euc goodness gracious ten dollars that's intense you made me smile man no i appreciate that nyc uc hey nyc uc aren't you the guy that sells wheels because i know there's a website that's nyc euc can you please respond yeah, uh, Mr. NYC EUC, there was a guy that I remember sell wheels in New York. So I really appreciate that, man. Um, so now, thank you, Mr. NYC EUC. Um, and that's it. That's it. That's all the people that gave. Now, there was another guy who gave me um, a $100 Amazon. Uh, it was like a, like a stock option or something like that. A stock. I don't know these things. But I don't know how to use it, so I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> um, NYC UC, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, so let's get into this. Let me open up EUC World so that people who don't really know what EUC World is, you can now know what it is. Um, let me go to EUC World here. So you, all you do is you go to EUC.world. Okay, EUC.world. All right, so let's let's um let's share this screen here real quick. Okay. Share. Hold on for a second, guys. Window EUC world. There we go. So let me make this bigger. Oh gosh. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Um, turn this down. Okay, so this is EUC World, okay? EUC World is basically, let me see if I can put myself next to it. Nope, that's not how you want it. That's not how you want it. And that's not, I'll put it like this. So basically, EUC World, as you know, is a monitoring app for EUCs. And it is the most comprehensive EUC app out there for Android. Unfortunately, it's only for Android at the moment. But the reason EUC, I like EUC World, and obviously you guys can tell me why you like EUC World as well, but the reason I like EUC World is because 
it's nitty gritty. <laughs> okay, it's what you see is what you get. It's there's no fluff about it, man. And the interface is just beautiful. One of the one of the things I really let me sign in. One of the things I really, really like about EUC World is this. And I don't think any other app has this. But a lot of people ask me, is there a group ride in your area? Is there is there a group in your area that, you know, do you guys do riding, blah, blah, blah? Look at this, guys. Look at this. Holy smokes. These are all the people with EUCs, man. These are all the people with EUCs. In Africa, in South Africa, there's freaking... Look at Brazil. What the frick? There are riders in Brazil, dude. Look at this. In the Pacific Ocean. Look at this. There's someone riding in the Pacific Ocean, man. <laughs> That's what I'm playing. I'm sure there's like an island there. What does it say? How do we zoom in? Yeah, I'm sure there's like a little island. Let me see what that is. This is very interesting. Who is this person? Who is this person out there in the in the Pacific? Oh, okay. So this is Hawaii. So there's one person in Hawaii riding an EUC right now all by himself. Wow. So all of you in the United States and other vast amount of land that's complaining about not having a group ride. Shame on you. Because this guy is out in the Pacific in the North Pacific Ocean riding by himself. <laughs> this is awesome. And then you have like, look, I mean, just look at this. Now, a couple of years ago, like a long, 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 long time ago when wheels weren't that popular, EUC World was, I mean, I remember when I could count, I could literally count on one hand how many people were riding, like literally. So I live in, look at this, the whole United States back then was just not this congested. You know what I mean? And look, look at Europe. Wrong way is somewhere in here. Where can we, where is he? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, look at this, guys. This is this is intense. You have Australia, New Zealand. This is intense, man. Let me let me go closer. Let me see. Control to zoom. Okay. Let me go. Let me go to where I live. Let me see. Where do I live? I live. Can I search? No, I can't search. This is New York. Let's see what New York. Where's New York? New Jersey. Zoom in. How, how do you zoom in? Okay, so this is New York. This is pretty wild, man. So yeah, you if you create an account, if you go to EUC World, EUC dot world, <clears throat> um, you can create an account. And um, sorry, I keep turning the heat on and off. You can um, <clears throat> you can go create an account, and then you can just see what's going on, dude. This is pretty wild. Now the cool thing about EUC World is that you can set up um, all kinds of like stuff. So um, so let's let's actually let's scroll down a little more. So right here, <clears throat> it gives you some uh, tour statistics. So I guess there's a total mileage of four million. So so far, we as a whole, okay, as a whole, as an EUC community, have traversed four million five hundred thousand and nine uh, five hundred thousand nine five hundred. 9,654 kilometers, which I don't know how much that is in miles. So apparently they have some type of uh, statistics here about CO2 we've saved. Um, I don't know if you guys believe in this global warming thing, but um, this is CO2. And we can't, we can't dismiss the fact that we put CO2 into the earth. Um, the trees love it. But 496,062. Uh, CO2. So how, kilograms of CO2. Hmm, interesting. And then we have 438,141 tours. And then there's 8,154 active users. Holy smokes, guys. That is, that is some powerful facts. That is some powerful facts. Let me see what you guys are saying. That is some powerful facts. Um, what did you say? Most people can't believe they can ride an EUC. I know. Even when they're on it, they're like, holy smokes, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And maybe those are the ones that get the cutouts. Because then when they feel and realize they can do it, they cut out. I'm playing. Um, yes, Delvo. 
EUC World is the best app. Absolutely. It really is, man. I mean, look at this. Um, add Fred, Jan Dong. Honestly, it's way easier than I thought it would be. Once you get going, you'll be good, man. Once you get going, it's good. 29 in the chat and only 17 likes. Hit, <laughs> Yeah, guys, I appreciate it if you hit the like button. I haven't been saying that, but it is what it is. It's your thumb. Do what you want. Um, or actually, in this case, it's your finger. <laughs> um, let's see. Done at E. Simon. Yeah, create an account, guys. Create an account. Um, EUC world. Uh, EUC dot world. Um, I haven't done much research on the on the guy, but he, I mean, wow, he's intense, man, for creating this stuff. I feel bad for the one guy in a, <laughs> one in Alaska. There's a guy in Alaska. <clears throat> man, I didn't see that. But um, but yeah, so <clears throat> so what another thing that's cool is if you scroll down, you'll see something that says top riders. So top riders, it kind of gives you a goal, you know what I mean? Kind of gives you a goal. Um, at one point I was on there as because there weren't many riders anyway. Um, I was on there as one of the what was it, fast and furious. Yes, I remember once I was on there for fast and furious. And for Steel Legs, it was Archie, which is Panda. Um, he, here he is. Glo oh, so yeah, he had Steel Legs and Globe Trotter. Uh, he was leading that for a long, long time. Um, but as more and more people get EUCs, you know, people who are reigning for a while are gonna get, you know, you know, pushed down to the bottom because there's some. Because you look at this and you're like, holy smokes, I gotta, I gotta beat Patrick Dot Robert. Shout out to Patrick Dot Robert for Steel Legs, uh, Globe Trotter, Stormtrooper. Shout out Fast and Furious, Larbarst, <laughs> uh, Frequent Rider. I mean, this is awesome, guys. This is awesome. So, <clears throat> and the cool thing about this app also is that it uh, there's a lot of updates, and you know you can just get some nice um, answers. So just go to the frequently asked questions if you have questions about it. You know. A lot of frequency, frequently asked questions. There's a support section, you know, send an email, support section. And preferences, you know, I believe, yeah, so you can change from kilometers to miles, as you can in the app. But these are all cool things you can do. And, and let's go to, like, some of the tours. So this is, you can tour yourself. So <clears throat> you can log your, your trips. And um, let me see. So these, are, these were some of my tours. <clears throat> back then, back whenever. Um, but if I click on one of those, oh, it's is that locked? Okay, this one's unlocked. So you can you can see you can see what you did. You know, for this was on. Wow, that's interesting. This was an in motion V five. When was this? <laughs> oh, you know what? This is this. This is the in motion V five I have right here. So it says 0.86 kilometers. That's funny. Uh, max speed 14 kilometers. That's because I was playing with it. But I don't know what the freak that is. But yeah, so this gives you like wheel statistics. It gives you anything from your battery to voltage to current to power. So if you really want to learn how you how you ride, like what type of rider you are, the the data will not lie to you. So if you think you're someone who's like a you know fast and the furious guy, I'm a fast rider. Oh yeah. Check out your stats, see if you're indeed a fast rider or not. You know what I mean? And then it'll tell you. It'll be like, oh, actually, I'm, I'm not that fast. I'm just I'm just an average casual rider. Wow. Cool. You know what I mean? And uh, vice versa, if you think you're and look at this. Look at this crazy charts, dude. Look, look at this. Like this is data, man. This is data that you can use to determine what your wheel is doing. Is your wheel, you know, are you constantly over overheating your wheel when you're riding? You know, is it constantly overheating? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Um, energy consumption. Am I a hard rider? Am I really pushing the limit every single day? Is my and that's another way you can tell if your wheel is gonna last over time because a lot of people, you know, people ask me how long does this last. My brother just asked me the other day. He's like, how do you know? Like for example, he's like, so for most cars, you know, for Ford, for example, the taxis, you know, they have their own shop, they have an own mechanic, so they can go like millions of miles. You know what I mean? Um, I know of a BMW that did 300 miles. It's an old 19, 1998 BMW or something like that. They did like 300,000 miles. I said 300 miles. 300,000 miles in that thing. But that was well-maintained. Now, with our wheels, 
does anybody know? Does anybody? Um, I really appreciate it, Mr. EUC Lifer, five dollar there. Really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> does anyone know? <clears throat> oh, you know what? Hold on, hold on. I think I have something here. Hold on for a second. Hold on. I want to get rid of this. Oh man, I just dropped my 16x. <laughs> I want to get rid of this thing right here. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me see if it's in good condition. I think it is. There's something here I will. I don't mind giving away because I want to make space. I want to make space in this place because it's just, it's getting really, really hectic here. So I want to pose a question. <clears throat> I saw Sensei Vegan and um, his friends try to do a giveaway the other day. So I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, you know what? I can't do a giveaway for this one. Is it over there? Uh, look, I, I can't do it. <clears throat> I can't because I thought I had one. But anyway, um, I'll think of something. I will think of something. I thought I had one. Let me see. Wow. I really did think I had one. But I don't. <clears throat> Anyway, the question is, here's the question, guys. Here's the question. Um, what has been the longest living EUC so far? Like, in terms of range, okay? What is the highest range we've seen on an EUC so far? I know it's not going to be in the U.S., because the U.S. has really, you know, small cities, everything is close and everything like that. I expect that the the one EUC that has the craziest range, as a matter of fact, I could probably look on here, maybe not, um, you know, is in Europe, somewhere in Russia, or something like that. Tell me, guys. <clears throat> anyone? Does anyone know you miss V? I know we do miss V. Where is V? Every now and then she pops in and out, but I never see her. But um. Does anyone know? Does anyone know the the um, the longest surviving EUC in terms of mileage? Anyone? 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 <clears throat> Does anyone know? <laughs> anyway, whenever you're ready, you can put it in there. But anyway, these are all stats that you guys can follow. These are all stats that you guys can use to uh, pretty much determine um, how you're doing, how your wheel is doing. And pretty much to see if your main, if your wheel is gonna last, because if your constant, if your wheel is constantly uh, going over the the temperature uh, threshold, if you're constantly pushing it hard in terms of like your know, power consumption, etc., and that's a constant thing, then you can you can kind of assume that oh shoot, this wheel is not gonna last. You know what I mean? Because there's a way to ride hard and there's a way not to ride hard. On top of that, all the crashes, all the off roading, and all that other stuff you guys do, you know. Eventually, your wheel is going to die. So that's a nice way to 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 um to assess your wheel. So let's see if you we got an answer here. Okay, so Sakogu says, EUC forums had a guy named Dancer say he has 30, that's kilometers, man. I have to convert. Hold on. That's okay. That's okay. I will convert. Uh, 33250 kilometers in miles. Holy moly, 20,660 miles. Wow, that's in the car world, that's just breaking in the car. You know, it hasn't even passed its warranty yet. The warranty for cars is usually on 50,000 miles. So in the car world, that's like, you know, just breaking it in. That's awesome, dude. 20,000 miles. Wow. That's intense. Monster Pro. Okay. There's a guy in Europe who did 12,000 miles on his 16S. <laughs> wow. No idea but anyone else, but I have a monster. That was an interesting thing to know. Okay. Uh, who says he was the fastest? He was a cheater. <laughs> Oh, man. How did he cheat? He put it on like a roller or something. Anyway, guys, let's get to it. Let's get to uh, setting up this app and um, get your wheels ready. If you're in the EUC world side, 
just have your EUC world ready and let's let's get this going, man. Let's get this going. Uh, I'm not gonna try to make it a long live, but uh, now I have to set this thing back up. So yeah, this is EUC world, guys. EUC.world, check it out, download the app, support the man. Let's do this. All right. Remove. Let me share the screen again. Let's go set up some stuff. Share screen. Share entire screen. Boom. There we go. Um, is that how I want to do it? I guess we could do it like that. Yep. <clears throat> All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> All right, now I have to cast. Let me do that real quick, fast here. Yay. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let me um let me put the link in there in case anybody actually, you know what? Hold on. Oh. I hate when this thing does this. Hold on. I have to disconnect real quick because I have to get rid of. When I cast, I lose control over the screen. So I got to rush real quick when it does it. Cast, run out. Settings, connect. Run out real fast. There we go. <laughs> it won't let me control my screen. Perfect. All right. So let's let's get this going, guys. Let's get this going. All right. Is this full charge? Uh, pretty much. Let I'm gonna I'm gonna just take this. So it's gonna disorient you guys. Okay. I'm gonna take this camera, bring it over there, and um, let me put the link in there in case anybody objects to how I'm doing this. <clears throat> Paste. Okay. Yeah, so join the chat if you know what to do or if you see me messing up, okay? Let's do this. Let me take this real quick. This camera is going to be all over the place, guys. So patience. Patience with me. And you know what? Let me just remove.
So, oh shoot, you guys are hearing it all done. <laughs> Pretty much, I know. <laughs> so true. All right, so I'm gonna connect the wheel and we're gonna get to it. <clears throat> Trust me, I don't want to be like this. It's just, that's how I am. I got to figure this out. Okay. So, can you guys see me? All right. You guys can see me, right? All right, good, good. <clears throat> All right, so this is my, can you even hear me? Can you guys hear me? Type a one in the chat if you can hear me. Type a one in the chat if you can hear me, please. Is this thing even... All right, cool. All right. <clears throat> so this is my high-speed MSP, okay? You know what? Let me, let me see if I can get a different view, because I don't know if you guys can see it. Like, you can see them, but it's, like, really small. Is that a good size? <laughs> it should be a good size. Anyway, this is my high-speed MSP, right? Okay? So I'm going to turn it on. All right, it's on. <clears throat> By the way, yes, I fixed my high-speed MSP, man. It's all set to go. So let me try to connect to it. What you're gonna do is, you should see on the screen what I'm doing, okay? Everything I'm doing, you should see what I'm doing, okay? So let me just put this on. You should be able to see what I'm doing. I'm watching myself on another, phone like you guys are so <clears throat> all right okay so this thing is on all right so if you look i don't know why but before it was different now it's like this there used to be a speech icon at the top but apparently you don't need it now but first thing you're going to do is if you tap on this yellow i'm not yellow but this green dot you see how it's pulsating it's just alerting you to click on it so that it can connect to Bluetooth. So now you see the Bluetooth. Let me take off that comment. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> because um, one day I'll have everything set up properly, guys. But for now, that's how it's going to work. All right. One day in my life, I will set up everything properly. All right. Let's do this. <clears throat> so, here we go. I'm back. Get your wheel. Turn it on. All right? Click on the Bluetooth sign. Okay. There we go. And then click on your wheel. Hopefully, you don't have multiple wheels on at a time. But if you don't, and you know your ID for your wheel, just click on it. So that's mine right here. So click on that. It's gonna prompt you for a wheel password. You don't need that, just hit connect. It's gonna ask you for the model, select the model of the wheel. Okay, I guess I'll do that. I'm gonna scroll down to, um, this, is, this is an 84 volt MSP, so. Hey, there it is. M Super X 84 volt. One of the best wheels out there, guys. This is one of the best wheels. Oh, man, I love this wheel so much. Oh, my goodness. You have no idea. So far, is there... Oh, there's someone popped up in the live. Let me, um, let me put them on. Hold on for a second. Let me put them on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My computer's not with me, so that's why I'm like all over the place. Who is that? David Mitchell. Um, David Mitchell, you came in, but then you went out, so 
I'll put the link in again for you guys if you... Alright. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna do this first, then if you guys want to comment, I'll let you in. Alright, so check it out. Um, so now, you're seeing what I'm seeing. You're seeing the miles at the top, the, uh, the speed, okay, with the zero, that's the zero, that's the main speed. Then you have 85, 86% right here. I'm not sure why it's, in, why it's going up so slowly, but usually it happens right away, okay? I haven't connected UC World to this 84 volt in a while. This is a brand new board, so that could be the reason why it's doing this as well. I'm not sure. You see this, the, the temperature right here is 75. That temperature is the temperature of the wheel. At first, I thought it was the temperature of outside, like the ambient air, but this is the temperature of the wheel itself, okay? Then you have the journey time, top speed, average speed, average riding speed, voltage, current, okay? So that's what you got. <clears throat> now, here's the important part that we're all here for. How do we set up this wheel so that, you know, it, it alerts you uh, when you reach certain thresholds? For me, for example, I care about speed. It's all about speed for me. Um, I don't typically, like I know this is the high speed MSP, so I'm not going to push it harder than it's capable of handling Torque, you know what I mean? I'm not going to force it to go forward the same way I would with a torque MSP. I know that torque MSP is insane, so I'm going to push it really hard. But this is a high-speed MSP. The last time I pushed it hard, I blew a capacitor. So I'm not going to push it real hard. So let's. So you, there's three dots on the top right. Okay, you see there's three dots on the top right? Click on that. Okay, so that's going to pull aside the, um, the menu. Okay, so you should be <clears throat> seeing the menu now. And these are all, this is where you set up your wheel. Okay, now if you look, all these menus are extremely in depth. Okay, this is a really in depth thing. So we're going to start with general. So let's go to general. And you can set up your language, you can set up your theme, um, you can set up your screen orientation, all kinds of stuff. You can even say, always keep this thing, always keep the screen on. Okay, so these are my settings. You guys can do whatever you want, but these are my settings. And this is why I haven't cut out recently. Um, in the past, I would cut out a lot because I didn't know about EUC World. I would, I would literally just crash to find out the top speed of the wheel and have a lot of gear on. But now because of EUC World, wheel log and, and, and other apps like that, um, I'm a lot safer now, even though it looks like I'm going crazy. Everything is under control, okay? This minus the uncertainty of electric unicycles. Everything I do is calculated, especially with this app, okay? So these are my settings. Um, you'll see here it says show when locked, okay? So basically what that means is when my screen is locked, this thing is still gonna show. So let me go and try to lock my screen right now. Hopefully you'll see this. I hope you'll see this. You know what, I don't wanna... Let's lock it. Okay, so my screen is locked right now, um, and I don't think I can cast. Oh, cool, so there we go. So yeah, when the screen is locked, you'll still be able to see the main screen, which is this screen right here, okay? Um, which is good, so if, you're, if you put this in your pocket and you just wanna glance at your miles per hour or whatever, you can just pull it out, tap your power button and not log in, you'll just be able to see this screen. Obviously you won't have any, you won't be able to control it. You'll just be able to see it, okay? So back to the menu. So we're back at the main menu and we're going to general, back into general, okay? How are we doing guys? How are we doing? Press a one if you can hear me, press a one. I don't want to keep going if no one can hear me. Press a one if you can hear me, we're good. Are we good to go? Press a one. <clears throat> All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, then you have like full screen, compact mode, enable PIP. PIP is pretty cool, I really like this. So PIP, enable PIP is picture in picture. Okay, you know when you have your TV, you see picture in picture, um, you can watch two things at, at once. So basically what that means is when you 
hit your home button, it doesn't close out the app. It's still open. See, I can move it around. How cool is that? I can move it around. You see that? Wow. So this is picture in picture. So you're still able to see the miles per hour, the battery percentage, the temperature. That's pretty much, and the miles. That's pretty much it. But it's picture in picture. How cool is that, right? So let's get back into that thing. Okay, then you hit in the center and it makes it big again. Okay, let's repeat that. So if you hit in the center, you tap it once, you hit in the center and it makes it big again. So back to, back to uh, general. So here we are. And this is just what I have set up. I have speed in miles. I set it up in miles. You can set up in kilometers by deep, by toggling this off. It'll turn it back to kilometers. And um, temperature in Fahrenheit. I'm in Fahrenheit because I'm in the United States. Battery level. Um, you can set the um, uh, algorithm. I don't. I don't set this. I don't set this at all. It says optimize. I don't have. I don't really care about this. But. Um, and I don't know much about this, so I'm not going to explain it, okay? I'm not going to go in. Whatever I don't understand here, I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> um, so there's a bunch of other options here, like speed and distance correction. Basically, what it says here is if your wheel under or overstates speed or distance indications, you can correct them with these settings, okay? If wheel is not connected, tour recordings or data logging is active, these settings will be disabled. Okay, and then you have the correction here. So you can correct it based on how you ride or whatever. I don't really know this. Um, okay, great. So now that's the general. Now let's go to the fun part. This is wheel. So go back to, okay, we're back on the main menu. Click on the wheel option. Okay, and now you have options. So I have my light off, so we're going to start with the lights. So this is the headlight mode. You know this already, guys, if you've used this in the past. I can do flashing, okay? So my light is flashing. I don't know if you can see this. All right. So my light is flashing right now because I told it to flash it. Now I want the light on. The light is on, not flashing. And now I want the light off. So now the light is off. Okay, very simple, nothing crazy. Now, here's a cool feature. Here's a very cool feature. So this feature here says persistent headlight mode. So <clears throat> some wheels, they come with a firmware update that allows you to, allows the wheel to remember what your light settings were. So you don't always have to go back and set it all over again. You know what I mean? Like if you have your flashing lights, um, your light will remain flashing. If it was on, it'll remain on, etc. So this is this option right here, persistent headlight mode. It says headlight mode will, re will be restored on the next wheel correction, uh, connection. Sorry. So I'm going to turn my, okay, this is on, right? Okay, so this is on right now. And if I go back to wheel, make sure I toggle this. So this is on. Now I'm going to shut off my wheel. Okay, EUC world, let's prove it. <laughs> I'm going to turn this on and my light should turn on again. Okay, so turn it on. And it's not on. Okay, hold on for a second. Let's maybe maybe I messed that up. Let's go back and let's go to headlight mode and let's turn it on. Okay, and then let's select persistent headlight mode. So now it's on. Okay, so now let's turn this off. And it should remember that I had it on. Okay, so let's turn it on. Boom, there we go. So now let's do it again for flashing. So if we go to wheel and we go to headlight mode and I say flashing, just make sure the persistent headlight mode toggle button is on, okay? So now it's flashing. The persistent headlight mode uh, toggle button is green, which means it's on, it's active. So I'm gonna shut it off. And now the next time I turn it on, it's gonna remain flashing. Boom, there we go. How awesome is that? So you have to set first your headlight mode within the options, so I'm gonna shut it off, and then select persistent headlight mode to make it active, okay? Same thing with the LEDs. So now at the bottom, there's something called LED mode. So here you go, this is LED mode. 
Um, I like mine flashing because I don't think these LEDs are bright enough. So I, I figure the more it flashes, people are more likely to see me. So if I choose zero, that's this mode. All right, so this is the mode it's in. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it'll remember it though. Let's give it a shot. Shut it off and let's see if it remembers this mode. But it did say headlight mode, so I don't know if it'll remember the... Oh, cool, so it remembers the... Um, it remembers the mode for the LEDs too, so that's good to know. Awesome. So there you go. Now let's do, let's go down a little more. Um, oh, great! There's an option here that says Enforce LED LEDs mode. So when you click on it, it'll say Disabled when connected always. So it's up to you what you want to do. Okay. So now. Um, speed alerts. So this is where um, you turn on and off your um, beeps. So sometimes when you hear, like you'll see me riding sometimes with my wheel and you'll hear the beeps going crazy, right? And some people ask me, why didn't you turn off your beeps? Well, sometimes I use the beeps for other people, not for myself, because I'm riding really fast. I have my helmet on. I have my AirPods on and people might not hear me coming. So I, I leave the beeps for them to be honest, because I don't hear it. When, once I put on my, hel my helmet, dude, I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything the wheel is doing. I have no clue what it's doing. I rely primarily on the app itself. So I leave the beeps on for people around me. That's, that's why I have it on. And I usually have it on the last beep, the 80%, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so what you're gonna do right now is click on speed alerts under speed alerts and limit. So you click on that, and then it'll say, it'll say um, enable first and second beep. So let's click on that. So right now, um, I've enabled the first, second, first and second speed. Okay, I'm gonna turn up my beeper volume because it's really low. Um, let me see. It's, you know, my speaker is, my beeper is messed up. I got it like that. I'll have to get a new uh, one, but <clears throat> it's okay. Anyway, the point is, um, it should be, Okay, so let's let's lift it and let's let's go above my um, my speed limit here, which is thirty nine or thirty seven miles an hour. Let's do this. Pick it up. So it's beeping right now. You can't hear it because it's really low, but it's like. Nah, 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 nah. Um, I probably should have used my another wheel, but it's okay. Um, but you saw the red. You saw the red, so that means I was um, exceeding. Uh, but anyway, um, <clears throat> so back to wheel. Now, I, speed limit, I, I'm not sure what this is. To be honest, I really don't know what that is. Um, I really don't. And then you have riding mode at the bottom. Riding mode, hard, medium, soft. A lot of you know, know about this. A lot of this is like, you know, old for you guys. But a lot of people who don't know about this, hard mode, pretty much gives you the full potential of the wheel. So when you lean forward, there's, there should be no tilting going on. Uh, medium mode gives you a little less power. So when you lean forward, you're gonna feel a little dip going forward. It makes the wheel a little bit more playful than hard mode. Um, and, and soft mode, obviously, is a lot more playful. So if you're making uh, small turns or whatever, um, you're gonna experience a lot of pedal dip and it's gonna feel scary to you but it's, it's fine because what it's doing is it's creating a little buffer for you so that the ride doesn't feel so harsh. You know what I mean? So I like riding in hard mode because I, I like uh, torquing the wheel. I like immediate acceleration, et cetera, et cetera. Now calibration is a little interesting. So let me see how I could show this. So with calibration, um, I have a complete separate video on that. So I will probably show that to you guys a little later. But this is where you calibrate your wheel as to how you want to ride. So right now, if you look, the wheel seems a little straight to you, but it's actually it's actually tilted back three degrees. So I like riding with my pedal tilt backwards three to four degrees. On the EXN I just bought, it's at six degrees because I don't know when I bought it, it was already tilted. But this one is at three degrees. And the way you do that is by calibrating the wheel. Uh, I'll, show, I'll post a video on that because I have a video already made about this. So I'll just put it in the link in the description. I'm not gonna do it here right now. 
But if you read the instructions on how to calibrate, it's very simple, okay? It's very, very simple. <clears throat> and now, here's another cool thing. This is a lateral tilt. So lateral tilt, I'm, I'm going to try to demonstrate this right now, but basically um, when, when you bend the wheel over, it's either going to stay on and try to skid out of place, or it's going to shut off. So right now, in this case, it's shut off. Most wheels shut off at 45 degrees. So this one is it just shut off. And I believe, let me try this. I'm going to say low. Let's see. Okay, that's off. So I, I hope that's what it is. And this is medium now. Hmm, interesting. That might not be what it is, but let me see. Okay, anyone can correct me if I'm wrong on this one because I'm not too sure what this ladder is. But anyway, um, <clears throat> and then you have the beeper volume, okay? So a lot of people are like, I can't hear my beeps. I can't hear anything. Well, EUC World gives you the option to um, uh, increase the volume of your beeper. So here you just tap on beeper volume, and then you could bring it up to nine, which is the full volume of the beeper, okay? This beeper is all messed up, so it's not a really good demonstration. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go to the gauge. So we're back in the menu, and we go to gauge. Okay, so where it says max speed, this is the max speed of the gauge. So right here, if you look, at the main screen, okay, you'll see that um, there are dots on the outside part of the gauge, okay? These dots on the outside part of the gauge lets you know how fast, well, it, it's a visual representation of the top speed of the wheel. So right now in the menu, if I go to gauge, it says 25 miles per hour, right? So that means when I, when I allow the wheel to spin, notice like, as soon as it gets to 25 miles an hour, um, the spit up, the gauge, the vision, what is it? The, um, the graphic gets outside of the gauge itself. So let me show you again. The graphic goes way outside of the gauge. See? Way outside. You see that? So what you, got, what you have to do is adjust it. So you go to gauge, and I know... I know the top speed of this high-speed MSP is around 48, 49 miles an hour. I will never do 49 miles an hour on this because I know, based on other videos I've seen, that people crash at 49 miles an hour. <clears throat> Maybe I will do it one day. I don't know. But I, I know I, I've never – the highest I've done on this is 47 miles an hour. So I'm going to put 48 miles an hour, okay, as the gauge. Now, when I go outside, I will see that the dots increase. I have a lot more dots now, okay? This is representative of the top speed of the wheel. So now when I go to allow the wheel to spin, you see 25 miles an hour is still, the red is still within the gauge, you see? You see that? Now 40 miles an hour, it's way up, you see that? So there you go. It's a visual representation of how fast the, the wheel is, okay? Okay, so now, that was gauge. Um, I'm just going to keep that there. And now here's my favorite part. We're going to go to, we're going to skip data logging and we're going to go to alarms. Now this part is very, very important. This is the most important part of EUC world. This is the main reason I use this app. Okay. This is the primary reason. I have no other purpose for the EUC world app other than this right here, alarms. And a lot of you, should take note. So <clears throat> here we go. So number one, you want to enable alarms, okay? But before you do this, what you want to do is go to sound and speech at the bottom where it says sound and speech. Now tap on that and you want to activate voice prompts and messages. So if I toggle this off, voice prompts and messages is off. That means you won't hear any alerts whatsoever. So you want to make sure that this is on, okay? First things first. Okay, now let's go back to alarms, and here we are in alarms. 
So now we click on alarm mode, okay? So now in alarm mode, it gives you the option, three options. It says vibrate only, vibration and beeps, vibration, beeps, and voice alerts. I chose vibration and beeps, okay? That's just me. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can test this stuff. You don't have to go outside and try this, guys. All you have to do is pick up your wheel and let it spin. Okay, over voltage alarm, you can do that. Obviously, if you're charging your wheel and you want this thing to check on whether or not your wheel is being over volted, you will have to have a connection with the wheel. You can't shut off the app. You have to have the wheel, um, the wheel connected to the app. Here comes my favorite part. So you have two, three priority alarms. You have a lowest priority, medium priority, highest priority. And then at the bottom, you have current. I don't deal with current, but you can as well. If you know the current it takes, if you know the amount of current it takes to cut your wheel out, then you'll set it down here, okay? If you know the temperature that causes your wheel to pretty much malfunction or, or tilt back or whatever, you'll set it right here, okay? But I'm gonna do my favorite part, which is lowest priority, medium priority, highest priority alarms. So for the lowest priority, I never set anything. I set it to zero, I just turn it off. But for the, for the medium priority, it's off now because I haven't connected this stuff in a while. Actually, no, this is a new board, that's why. So for my lowest priority, I set it to 37 miles an hour, okay? I set this to 37 miles an hour because I know this thing is capable, actually, wait a minute, this is not a torque. This is the high speed MSP. Okay, so the high speed MSP, because I know it does more than that, I will set it to 43 miles an hour, okay? I'll set the medium priority to 43 miles per hour. Okay, and then, the highest priority, I will set to 45 miles an hour. You know why? Because I don't like riding more than 45 miles an hour on this high speed MSP because it's an 1800 watt hour battery. If I go above 45 miles an hour, my range is going to reduce, be reduced so much that it's not gonna be fun to ride this thing anywhere. So because I know it's capable of doing 48 miles an hour, I stay well below that because 45 miles per hour for me in the city is more than enough. You know what I mean? So what we're going to do now is bring the speed down a little bit just to demonstrate what happens when you set these priorities. So the first one is 16 miles an hour. I will set as medium and the highest priority I will set to 25 miles an hour. Okay. So here we go. So what will happen is um, you might not hear it. But I will, I'll turn it up and hopefully you can hear it. Top speed, 60 miles per hour, battery, 98%. Okay, I hope you guys can hear that. Um, let me make it louder than that so that you can really, really hear it. Hold on. All right. Hopefully you can hear it. But we've set our first, so this is what we did. If we go back to alarms, we set our speed to 16, our, our medium priority to 16 miles per hour, and the highest priority is 25 miles per hour. So what happens is when you reach the, six, the medium priority, you hear a, a tone, like a little tone that says doop, 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 doop. So that lets you know, listen, you've reached your, your medium priority. And then when you've reached your highest priority, you will hear, please slow down. Top speed, 60 miles per hour, battery, 98%. Okay, we can, I'll show you how to change these options too. You can tell it to say a lot more things. But for now, let's just demonstrate the 16 miles per hour. Ready? Let's go. You hear that? You hear that little doot doot? That's just a little warning letting you know, hey, you've reached your medium priority. All right, that's your medium priority tone. Now it's very different than your highest priority tone. Now let's go and make this thing ride at 25 miles an hour. Okay, let's do this. You hear that? That is very different than the first tone. So let's do that again. 25 miles per hour is my highest priority. That's the priority I know I don't want to go way above, okay? 
You hear that? Whoa. So top speed, 60 miles per hour. Battery, 98%. All right, let me um I'm gonna close this because I don't want it to keep saying 60 miles an hour because that is not true. <laughs> so I open it again. Welcome on board. Connected. So when you first connect, it'll say welcome on board. You could shut this, you could shut all of this off. But I like turning it on because at least when it's connected, um, I, I, I'll know it connected. Battery, 98%. Okay, so let's do this one more time. So the first medium priority for me is 16 miles an hour. So I know, the, so the way I work, the way I do this is I, I set, like I know that the wheel can do like 16 miles an hour, right? Let's say I have like a, I don't know, like a really weak wheel. You know what, let's just do it how I do it in natural life because I just can't speak otherwise. Like I know this will do 43, and I know I like to ride maximum at 45 miles an hour. Okay, did I mess that up? Yeah, I totally did. Okay, me, my medium priority in real life for the high speed MSP is 43 miles per hour, and my highest priority in real life is 45 miles per hour, okay? <clears throat> so here's what we do. So, when, I, when I'm riding in real life and it's 43 miles per hour. Battery, 98%. Okay, so in real life, when I'm riding and I reach 43 miles per hour, I don't slow down. I just know that, whoa, 43 miles per hour feels like this. And then the moment I hit 45 miles per hour, since I know I have a ton more buffer, I then pull back. At 45 miles per hour, when it says, please slow down, I then... I don't startle. You don't freak out. You just know, okay, start to slow down. You know what I'm saying? So let's do this again. So medium priority is 43 miles per hour. Hey, where's the, oh, shoot, sorry. I turned on the volume. All right, let's go. I'm not sure why it's actually, you know, I had the safety margin off, but I don't know why it's doing that. Um, Top speed, 49 miles per hour. Battery, 98%. Probably because of the safety. I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, that's how you do it. Um, so there's another, there's another feature here called, where is it? Um, oh, there we go. Voltage dependent speed alarm. Okay, so the, the alarm I just set up had nothing to do with the voltage, okay? Um, which means I can still have a cutout. The whole point of this is setting it up so that you don't have a cutout, right? So that you're less likely to cut out on your wheel. Well, the way I set it up originally with no um, voltage associated with the speed can still allow me to get a cutout. So, I can try to get at 43 miles per hour. And if I don't know what my battery is at that point. Top speed, 49 miles per hour. If I don't know what my battery is at that point, I could still encounter a cutout. You see what I'm saying? Because nothing's telling me what my battery is. So this is where this comes in. Voltage dependent speed alarm. So now what you're gonna do is set up your speed based on your voltage. Okay, so. Let's see. Okay, so the first one I don't really care about, but the medium priority I care about. So at 43 miles per hour, I want to make sure, so it says here, battery percentage, enable alarm when battery is at or low or below this value. So I know that 43 miles per hour is possible. So I'm going to set it to like, well, I can't because I'll just do 100 here because I can't kill the battery inside the house. So it's at 100%. So I know that this alarm is going to trigger at 100%. And I know at or 100% or below 100%. And then this 45 miles per hour um, is going to trigger at or below 100%. Okay, I can't do any lower because the battery is where it is right now. So let's try that. 43 and 45. Oh, why did it? Oh, hold on for a second. I'll have to find out why I did what I did, but 
Let me do, let's go back to the one I know that works. 16 and 25. So at 100% or low, at 100% or below 100% battery, this will trigger the alarm. So 16 miles per hour. Where's the alarm? Oh, shoot, sorry, I forgot I turned on the volume. Cool. There we go. So that first alarm is beautiful. At a, it's at 100. Top speed, 49. All right. So that's how you're going to set it up based on voltages. Let's go to 25 miles an hour. Yeah, you want to hear that. That is what's telling you back the freak up. Back up, man. <laughs> Stop. Slow down. <laughs> but that's, that's part of knowing your wheel. If you don't know your wheel, if you don't know what your wheel is capable of doing, then this is going to be useless to you. Okay? This app is going to be useless to you. But if you absolutely know what your wheel is capable of doing, then this is going to be of utmost importance. It's going to be valuable to you. Okay? So there's another thing we can do here. Let's go, let's click on speech and sound and speech, sounds and speech, okay? So if we click on sounds and speech, <clears throat> you'll see where it says voice prompts, okay? That's how, if you turn this off, you're not going to hear anything. I'll demonstrate that. I don't need to, but volume all the way up. Okay, it is, that's good. <laughs> but you don't hear any speech. You don't hear it saying, hey, top speed, slow down. You don't hear any of that. But you still hear the alarms. That's cool. Nice, 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 nice. Very good, very good. At least, you know, that's cool. But you don't hear the, the lady speaking. Top speed, now, 49 miles per hour. Now that I turn it on, you hear her speaking. All right, cool, cool. That's good, that's good, that's good. Um, okay, so now you will see where it says speech rate. So if you click on speech rate, you can have the lady speak to you or the machine, I wouldn't say lady, you can have the machine speak to you in a normal um, uh, rate or a slow rate or a fast rate. So you can just toggle that. I'm not going to demonstrate that. Um, maybe if you're listening to music or something like that um, and then you don't want it to like take up all that time to say something simple. <clears throat> and then you have uh, the speech um, pitch, okay? Um, let's see what this is. Hold on. Okay, great. So now message configuration. This is what you can, this is, these are all the things you can have the machine say to you. These are all the things, all the alerts you can have the machine say to you. How cool is that? Okay. So you can have it say the current speed, the speed limit, the average speed, Average riding speed, top speed, distance, heart rate, if you have something connected, energy consumed, energy consumption, I mean, the list goes on. So I'm going to add another thing here. I'm going to add my phone battery level. I'm going to add the voltage. I'm going to add the temperature, and I'm going to add the motor temperature. I'm going to add the current time and weather. I want to hear what the weather sounds like. Okay. Um, I'm going to add distance. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's see what it says. Talk Go ahead. Talk. Say stuff. Now the interval for this is like a minute. So, um, it should be doing it soon, but. Talk to me. Come on, talk to me. <clears throat> Intervals. I'll do. There we go. Top speed, 49 miles per hour. Distance, 400 yards. Battery, 98%. Phone battery, 75%. Voltage, 81.6 volts. Temperature, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Time, 2305. How cool is that?
I didn't hear anything about the weather, but that's okay. I don't really care. I just wanted to see if it would work. But um, but 100 degrees Fahrenheit is of the wheel. The wheel is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Top speed, 49 miles per hour. Distance, 400 yards. Battery, 98%. Phone battery, 75%. Voltage, 81.6 volts. Temperature, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Time, 2306. So if you hear the time, the time seems to be in a 24 hour clock. <laughs> so you're gonna have to convert that in your head. Oh, another thing about EUC World I wanna mention is that when you're riding and you see something, you heard the top speed it said was 49 miles an hour, right? But if you look here, it says 48.5 miles an hour. So that's another thing you have to pay attention to. Um, it's not major, it's, it's very insignificant, but if your cutoff speed is like, 49 miles an hour and then you're like holy smokes it said i did 49 miles an hour and i didn't cut out well if you take a look a quick look at the at the uh, gauge here it says 48.5 so it'll do that every now and then i've seen that several times where it says um your speed is 45 miles an hour and it's like 44.5 you see what i'm saying so just keep that in mind so yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how much of an edge you like to ride, but just keep that in mind. That can be a false negative, false positive, false something. Just be careful of that. Um, I don't think there's any, oh, there might be something else I want to show you guys. <clears throat> Let's go back to the speech. Of course, you can turn off the welcome message. Okay, so when you turn on... Let me shut this off. Let me turn it back on. Okay, let me do that again. The volume is off. Connected. All right. So there's no welcome on board or anything like that. So back to speech. Welcome message. Welcome on board. Welcome on board. Connected. Yep. So there you go. So um, there's this thing called Avas. I don't use that, but apparently you can allow your... Battery, 98%. Phone battery. You can have your wheel um, sound like something else. Like, uh, I don't know. I've never used it, but people use it. Um, and I honestly don't even know how it works because I don't use it, so let me see if it doesn't. Even... Anyway, I don't use that, but Avas... Top speed, 27. Avas allows you to, um, it, it makes, it adds sounds to, like, car sounds, motorcycle sounds, I guess, to your, um, to your wheel. I don't use it. <clears throat> um... There's something else I wanted to show. Okay, so there, this is interval. So this is a, how often you want the wheel to speak to you, I mean the machine to speak to you. Okay, so this is 30 seconds or 0.5 kilometers per mile. Or 0.5 kilometers, not per mile. 0.5 kilometers. This is one minute every one minute or whatever. I usually do one minute because I want it as often as possible. And I don't think there's anything else I want to show you guys. Keep Bluetooth audio alive. What is the trigger? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, so there is another thing that this thing does. If you swipe over, there's a bunch of information, obviously, you can glance at. Okay, so I know that I bought this wheel at, oh, I keep forgetting, this is the high speed MSP, man. This is not the EXN. <laughs> the total distance on this board is 1.38 miles. <laughs> I've lost all of my data. Well, that's not true. I have some of it logged on EUC.world. So, um, 
But yeah, this is pretty much a brand new wheel, man. Brand new board, brand new wheel. I got some miles to rack up on you. But um, yeah, you can tell all kinds of stuff here. If you swipe over, you have a graphical representation of what uh, you know, what you want to know. Like for example, how much amps you pulled today. You know, what's your top speed, etc. And here is this requires GPS for you to record your. Um, let me see. Do I have to, you know what? This thing has no SIM card, so it doesn't really. It's not gonna work. But yeah, you will just. Click on this, but you'll have to activate your location in order to record um, your trip. Okay, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, there's nothing else I want to show. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going back to the, the computer now. Actually, there, um, yeah, let me see how I'm going to do darkness. But... Okay, so let me just close this. need this anymore yeah so that's it I mean if you guys have any questions let me know but that's that's it man if you a lot of you who are concerned about crashing your wheel if you know this app if you just sit down one day and just try to figure it out um, it'll be very very beneficial to you you know what I mean? So any questions, guys, let me know. And if someone has something to say about it, hold on, guys. I got I to gotta do this. Here we go. Cool. Yeah, so this is how I'm able to ride how I ride because of EUC.world. Before... Like I said, it was all trial and error, man. Crashing and, and then knowing. Now I know it for sure, and it's inspired me to be more reckless. <laughs> oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Gotta set this up. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's inspired me to be a lot more reckless, and I don't know if that's something he wants to hear, that he's making people more reckless, but... We're going to be reckless anyway. It's just good to have something to help us stay safe, you know what I mean? Until these companies come out with something that is completely foolproof, UC.world, DarknessBot, apps like that. These, these, are, these are the answers. So here we go. OK, oh, close this. Disconnect. And I got my computer back. Thank you very much. Oh, all right. So, anyone has any question? Any questions? This was not supposed to be a long live. This is a beautiful short live. Let me see. Let me look at your comments here. Oh. My mic is over there. I got to get it. <laughs> All right. Woo! So, this was this was hopefully helpful, man. Hopefully. I'm going to chop it up for you guys and just show it as as, as that part, you know what I mean? But <clears throat> just sit down, go over the app, you know, learn the app. There's not much documentation on the app out there, how to use it. But if you saw, it's it's WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. It's very, very clear. There are certain things that are a little bit confusing, um, like um, the algorithm, um, the voltage to speed, all that stuff. But if you if you just pick up your wheel, set set up, set, you know, set it up, pick up your wheel, test it out. You don't have to go outside and, and risk your skin to figure out how this app works. You know what I mean? 
So this is the best app out there, man. This is the best app out there. And um, let's see. E. Simon, I will have an 84 volt MSX. Uh, get hit up to sell it quite often. What? Quite often. Okay. <laughs> no, Jens, I'm keeping it forever. Oh, yeah. I'm keeping my 84 volt forever. I learned everything. I It was the Tesla, then the 84 volt. That's how I learned everything. You know what I'm saying? So I was able to keep up with New Yorkers with an 84 volt for a long time because a lot of them didn't believe. At the time, people were like, what are you saying you stride? How can an 84 volt do 40 miles an hour? They didn't believe me. And I, I, I had to visit them and I visited them and I showed them, guys, it is possible. And they believed me then. But, you know, now 40 miles an hour is nothing. But yeah, I like the, I like the 84 volt a lot. I got a Monster Gen 1, 1600 watt hours. Kind of wish I had something a bit smaller, more portable now. Well, Sago, Sagoku, how much do you weigh? Maybe that's why you got it. How much do you weigh? Are you a tall guy? Are you a heavy guy? I'm excited about when we get the power thermal alarm settings. Kind of never had a good idea about those. Power alarm, power thermal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just every wheel comes out with specs. Just go by the specs. Look at the specs. You know, Gotway always released, Sherman released their specs. They let you know what the maximum volt uh, temperature is for overheating, a bunch of stuff. Just set up the EUC world based on that. <clears throat> Serena is on your helmet with an EUC if you're a paramedic, literally or figuratively. Oh, I guess he's talking about something else. Cruise control in your EUC. <laughs> you know, cruise control for me would be just mandatory tilt back. That's pretty much it. Because then that means I can cruise without worrying about cutting out. You know what I mean? Speed limit is your tilt back speed. Speed limit is your tilt. Really? Is that is that the case? Hmm. I'll have to try that because Gotway, does, it, it, for some reason, I couldn't do it past 30 miles an hour. So now that you mentioned that, I never played with that setting. Um, so I'll have to check that out. And hopefully that works. If that works in a Gotway, holy smokes. I don't care about emotion or King Song anymore. <laughs> but I'll have to check that out. Thank you, man. EUC World. Yep. Wrong way used it in an old video. He made... His unicycle sound. Yeah, right, right, right. I, and I saw a lot of people using that too. That's kind of cool. Yep, it is. For the one person. Look, if I can save one person's skin tonight, that's all that matters, man. One person's skin. Because that one person will help another person save their skin. Thanks for storing those features. I for sure will be getting that app to play. Yeah, play with that, man. You can't be in the EUC, in, in the EUC world, man, and not know about EUC.world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's literally the only app out there besides Darkness Bot that, that allows you, well, just a huge margin of, of safety, information to help you be safe. You know what I mean? Um, EUC Lifer. So how fast does the 84-volt MSX go? Hey, don't quote me on this, but quote me on this. Don't quote me on this. Quote me on this. Pay attention. My 84-volt MSX. Wait, I should have shown you. I did show you. I thought I did. The free wheel spin of the 84 volt MSX is about 65, 61, 62 miles an hour or something like that. The top speed for me at 210 pounds with gear, with no crazy hard acceleration, just gradually getting to speed is 40 miles an hour. Okay. 40 miles an hour I was able to do with this wheel and I am, I'm able to cruise at 40 miles an hour. Now, I don't recommend you doing that. Because I don't know, man. I don't know how much you weigh. I don't know what your the speed, uh, the wind speed around you. I don't know if you're going on a hill. I I typically did it on a flat surface with minor incline. Minor. When I say minor, I don't even notice it. Okay. Um, but yeah, 40 miles an hour. 40 miles an hour is the 84 volt MSX. Astonishing. 
Now it cuts out at about at about 41.2, if I remember exactly. Now every wheel is not the same guy. So <clears throat> I recommend if you really want to, you know, max out your MSX 84 volt, ride it at like 37 miles an hour, maybe 38 miles an hour, but nothing more than that. And how do you test that? Pick up your wheel, let it spin at 100% battery. And if it says 60 plus miles an hour, then you're most likely good to travel at 37 miles an hour on the, th on the 84 volt MSX. Because apparently there are different MSXs out there. There was one guy who said, I can't reach 40 miles an hour. One guy said, I cut out trying to do 40 miles an hour. And I'm like, holy smokes, I'm giving people the, listen, <clears throat> it happened for me. I don't know how people ride, but yes, I even demonstrated it on a video, you know? So um, just, just do it if you want, but just keep that in mind and obviously follow these settings. Follow. So the thing with the 84 volt MSX or gotways in general is that when you ride and you're approaching the, um, the cutoff, it'll tilt forward. So if you're, if you're leaning harsh, you're not going to feel it. You're not going to feel the tilt forward. By the time you feel the tilt forward, you're crashing. But the way I was able to accomplish that speed at that time was that I was nicely gradually going to 35, then 36. I was trying to find out what the top speed was. And then at 41.1, 41.2 miles an hour, I felt it dip. Like a, it was a harsh dip forward. But because I wasn't leaning in so hard, I was able to pull back and save myself. And the wheel caught itself again. And I kept riding. And when I checked, it was 41 point something miles an hour. You know what I'm saying? So then I dialed it back about two miles an hour and I, I comfortably ride at like 38, 37, you know, miles an hour. I don't really push it to 40 miles an hour. 40 miles an hour is just to know what the end limit is. That's it. I, I don't ride at 40 miles an hour. I pull it back, you know, so know what the maximum limit of your wheel is and ride smoothly within that beautiful range, that beautiful area, you know what I'm saying? The non-scary parts. So, you know, there are lots of wheels coming out, a lot of beautiful wheels coming out, a lot of powerful wheels coming out. It doesn't mean that the older wheels are gone, man. It doesn't mean that the older wheels are no longer valid. You know, I've said that in, a, in another live and a lot of other people said that, you know? This is a good opportunity for a lot of new riders to buy old wheels, buy old wheels, <clears throat> you know, at a cheap price. You know, a lot of people are probably trying to sell their wheels right now, trying to get these new wheels. <laughs> this is a good opportunity for you, you know. So let's see some of your comments. <clears throat> Safety margin alarm is all. I... Exactly. Same with me. That's all I care about. Safety margin. Yep. Um, EUC lifer, I've been 36, yep, and 200 pounds, and I weigh 210 pounds exactly. <clears throat> um, malcontent youth flew off my <laughs> flew off my wheel on way to work tonight. New England weather. Oh man, <clears throat> what happened, dude? What happened? I hope you're okay. Hope nothing bad happened. E Simon, I use a vas on EUC world to make my wheel sound like galloping horse it's so funny yeah i could imagine an euc sounded like a horse that is pretty funny imagine at night doing that oh man that's pretty scary for someone that you're coming behind all right guys well that was that was the whole purpose of the live okay to talk about safety okay um manufacturers have not gotten to the point where you can just ride to your heart's content and not worry about cutouts. It hasn't happened yet, except for EUC service. Except for EUC service. That's the only person or only entity that's built a wheel to the point where you can push it as hard as you can and not cut out. That's the only one that's done that. And he's not even a company that makes wheels. He modifies wheels. So <clears throat> until then, pay attention to all the monitoring apps. Don't just rely on EUC World. I'll tell you the downsides. Here's the downside of EUC World. And um, I'm sorry to mention it, but I have to mention it. The downside of EUC World for me, and, and put some of that in the chat if you have a downside, but the downside of the EUC World for me is that sometimes it just cuts out. Sometimes it just cuts out. It just stops connecting to the wheel. Now, this does not happen often. 
It does. In fact, it happens once in a blue moon. But when it does happen, man, it is the scariest thing. Once I ended up crashing my torque MSB trying to find out what the top speed is because it wasn't connected. I connected it, but somehow it disconnected from the wheel. And I just kept riding to my heart's content, thinking that I'm going to have a, an alert, you know, triggered, but nothing happened. And when I crashed, I was like, why did I crash? Like, what happened? How come this thing didn't go off? And it's just, it's just software. It's just technology. This happens. You know what I mean? Downtime. It just happens. So you have to keep that in mind as well. So Gotway, the newest EXN, I believe, has a speedometer in the front. The RS has a speedometer on the side. The Sherman has a speedometer. All these wheels with speedometers <clears throat> um, is, is really a step up because um, hardwire, hardwired gauges is the best, you know, because you're not worried about Bluetooth wireless connectivity or anything like that. That's the best, you know, but we have a long way to go. And that's a good thing for the community because, you know, it's one thing to be saturated, but it's another thing to have a, you know, slowly come in, slowly come up um, the pike and then just have all this innovation yet to be revealed, unveiled, unveiled. You know what I mean? So that's where we stand right now. <clears throat> I think it was too slippery. Then I came off around the corner, pedals dip forward and wobbles. Oof, my gosh, all the wrong conditions. Holy smokes. Glad you're okay, though. You sound okay. Glad you're okay. I'm 135 with no gear. My man, do it. 135 with no gear. Dude, I'm telling you, you're going to enter that portal. And when you enter that portal, that's when you're going to be initiated into the cutoff world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, man. Um, <clears throat> it's snowing where I'm at. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. You got to be careful in that snow. Oh, when you're riding in the snow, reduce the, the pressure of your tire, man. Reduce the pressure. Make sure it's kind of squishy. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Not too squishy, but squishy enough because you want to grab as much, um, uh, uh, you want to get as much grip as possible. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch is right. My UC world used to disconnect. Yeah, dude. I thought it was just me. I really thought it was just me. That thing would just disconnect randomly. And I'm like, no. So, <clears throat> um, what I, there has to be another way, but for now, that's what we got. And it's the best option. It's, it's really the best option. There's another option, tilt back, mandatory tilt back. That's another option. The problem with tilt back is it cuts in a little too early, you know? So I'm going to have to test that tilt back. Uh, the guy was talking about on the EUC world app, and hopefully that works above 30 miles an hour for the dot ways. <clears throat> but guys, that is it for me. That is it. That is it for me. Um, I'm just going to add. Let me stop sharing the screen. Any question, guys? Any questions at all? <clears throat> I'm just going to call it a night and give you guys your night back. Thank you so much for joining, guys. Thank you so much. I know it's not a fun topic, but it's a necessary topic, okay? It's a necessary topic because I like to, I like when I, when I post my videos and I ride crazy or what seems to be crazy for people and other people post their videos and they ride crazy, a lot of them don't tell you what they do to be safe because a lot of these guys ride crazy and you're like, how are they able to do this day in, day out and not crash? <clears throat> a lot of them have safeguards. And a lot of these guys who don't wear pads, who don't wear all this crazy gear, a lot of them just know their wheels. They've been riding a long time. So you can't take away the fact that these guys have tons of experience under the belt. So all this experience, all of this experience goes into somewhere. It goes somewhere, right? You're just coming onto the EUC scene and you want to catch up to them and you're going to end up in, in the in the portal that I talked about. And you don't want to end, there, end up in the, port, in the portal, man. Um, you know, unless you want to, unless it's your plan to do that. <clears throat> but that's how these guys, you know, don't crash. They, they know their wheel. They really, I rode with New Yorkers and, and <clears throat> next, next I want to go to Chicago. Yes. So I've been, I've been to New York. Now I want to go to Chicago because there's some crazy riders in Chicago. 
and I'm very impressed. I have, I've been impressed with these guys. So I, and they have better roads because New York is, if you look New York, you rarely see these guys ride on open roads. Sometimes you'll see guys do that. Like when they go to Coney Island or wherever they go or Connecticut or whatever. Um, but in, 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 uh, in Chicago, I see some guys having some real sweet rides and I'm like, holy smokes, where is this? So I would really like to visit Chicago at some point. Um, thumbs up if you've enjoyed this live stream. Thanks. Um, M E U C on my E U C <laughs> E U C all up in your name. That's awesome. Um, thanks for the live. Yeah, guys, thanks for joining. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Spartacus, thanks for doing the live. Have a good night. Yeah, thanks, guys. Have a good night. Enjoy your night. Great show. Many thanks. Yes, guys. So that's it. I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't have time to do the um <clears throat> the darkness spot because I couldn't cast it. I couldn't find a way to cast it on my computer. So darkness butt is also a WYSIWYG man, is what you see is what you get. It's very simple. Just sit down. I just recommend you sit there, open the app, play with it, lift up your wheel, see what it does. It's very simple. It's very simple, guys. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, for the outro, I'll just play um, an older video I had about setting up the wheel, <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. Guys, enjoy your weekend. Um, if you go riding, please be safe out there. Um, don't risk your skin unless you want to enter that portal and see what it's like. You know what I'm saying? On the other side. But um, my high-speed MSP is back. I just got to put some pedals on it and be good. But have a wonderful evening, guys. Thanks again for joining. Let me, let me do what I want to do here. I want to share a video file that I prepared. Actually, it's an older one, but it didn't have that many views, so that means I can I can show it again. There we go. Guys, have an awesome night. Peace. Happy riding. Safe riding. Safe and happy riding. Good night. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now, one of the good things about riding is knowing your wheel. And today, what I'm gonna help you do is set up what is called Wheel Log. It's probably one of the best um, EUC apps out there for controlling your wheel and knowing what it's about. What's <laughs> going the old on wheel the log. at any given time. So, let's get to it. Set up the Wheel Log. First things first, launch the EUC World app. Link is in the description. Welcome on board. All right, when you first log in, or launch the app rather, you'll receive this alert, welcome on board, and um, you'll receive some beeps. That's because it's not connected. So now what you wanna do is turn on your device. I have it connected. connected already, but in your case, if it's not connected, you'll have to connect it. Okay, so now in front of you, you have all the pertinent data that you will need, top speed average, current voltage, average speed, journey time, etc and the battery and the temperature outside so what you want to do now is a lot of people get confused and they wonder where is the menu what you want to do is take your finger and swipe across from the left of your screen okay like that see all right now you'll see general gauge settings log settings alarm settings tour tracking settings voice settings watch settings, flick settings, wheel settings, sign in and sign up. If you intend on tracking your distance, your trips, your speed, etc., etc., all of this can be logged in for you via the EUC World website. But for now, we're just going to focus on the settings. So my settings are as follows. For now, I will have to put the screen in landscape. All right. So I'm in landscape mode. Swipe from the left. And if I click on alarm settings, well, first let's go to general settings. So general settings, you'll see I have show when locked. Okay, so that means when you lock your screen, if this is the last app you have running, 
when you lock your screen, you'll be able to see the uh, pertinent data about the wheel, like miles per hour, um, average riding speed, etc., etc., um, while the screen is locked. Then I have speed and distance in miles, okay? So not in kilometers, in miles. If you're out of the United States, <clears throat> then you can transition to, you can deselect this and it will show it in kilometers. Then I have realistic battery level. Show more realistic battery level with additional safety margins. So I have that selected as well. For wheel speed correction, I have 0%. Wheel distance correction, 0%. Okay, now here you can reset top speed, etc, etc. That means if you lift your wheel and the wheel ends up spinning out of control, it'll give you a registered top speed. But that's not your real riding top speed, right? So you just hit this button here to reset the top speed. Also, if you're just coming from a ride and you hit a certain top speed, but you want it reset for the next ride, then you hit reset top speed. Same thing with reset user distance. You might not want to do that, reset the user distance, because I believe that is the distance of your wheel from the time you started riding. I reset it this once by mistake on my Tesla, and I wasn't able to get my original distance. So don't do that one. All right, this is general settings. Now to gauge settings. On gauge settings, max speed. This is the maximum speed shown on the outer dial. The outer dial, let me just swipe left for a second, is this right here, what's in the center. Okay, the 100% battery on the left with the green, 22%, I'm sorry, 22 degrees Celsius. So that's the center dial and back to gauge settings and it says the maximum speed shown on the outer dial is 25 miles per hour hmm you know what i don't actually know what that means to be honest i really don't i just showed you guys what that meant so anyway an it's old 25 video. miles per hour single tap action double tap action tap and hold action horn mode i don't use these things but this is the default settings um, that was given to me when, when I downloaded the app. Log settings, I know nothing about this. You can finagle with this on your own. Alarm settings, this is where we pretty much set up um, the speeds, um, the alarm settings, the priorities, etc. So, for example, here in the alarm settings, enable alarms. Allow the phone to vibrate as a warning or enable voice alarms. Yes. So I select that. That means when basically all your alarms are on, right? So if you're using Bluetooth, for example, all that data will be sent through your Bluetooth. Okay. In my case, I use earbuds. So when I'm writing, all that data is sent through my earbuds. So I don't have to rely on the beeps. Disable phone vibration. I have that deselected because I want the phone to vibrate. Unfortunately, my phone, it's an Android, and for some reason, Androids don't vibrate. Well, in my experience at least, I've had two, three Android phones. These phones don't vibrate as hard and rough as, or they don't have enough feedback with their vibration as an iPhone, for example. Um, over voltage alarm, that's not a bad idea. Enable the alarm when battery voltage goes above safe limit. Actually, I'll just go ahead and check that right now. That's not a bad thing to have on. With lithium ion batteries, you do not want to overvolt them. They become pretty much unusable once you overvolt them. So now we're at speed alarm, highest priority. You have highest priority, medium priority, lowest priority. All right. On the highest priority, I have 39 miles per hour. I know my wheel is able to do 40 miles an hour, but I have it set to 39 so that at least I have one mile per hour buffer before I hit that 40 mile per hour mark. Okay, this is good because if you make a mistake and push too hard, um, you know, the alarm will kick, uh, kick in one mile per hour before and you'll know to slow down. And if you don't slow down, then at least you have that one mile per hour buffer. Obviously, you could do 38 as well. Battery percentage. Now, I enabled the battery percentage at 
100%. I'm not sure why, but last time I tried it at a lower percentage, it didn't work. So I have it always at 100%. Um, you can finagle with yours, figure out why to do this. Why this? So just as a reminder, the reason you do uh, voltage is because you want your alarm to um, uh, trigger at a below or at that voltage. Okay. <clears throat> so if you're at a hundred percent voltage, you, it'll trigger it. If it's at 80, uh, 80 percent, uh, battery or under, it'll trigger that speed. You know what I'm saying? I typically don't care about that, but if you want to do it based on voltage, then these are the options that you will select. So if you're at 50% voltage, if you're at 50% battery, for example, you can say, I want my alarm to trigger at 43 miles an hour. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. This works or it doesn't work. The speed alarm in medium priority, I have at the highest 62 miles per hour. Why? Because I don't really have a medium priority priority. I don't really care about the medium priority and I don't really care about the lowest priority so I max them out since I really don't care about them you could change this based on your needs but I really don't have a need for it my highest priority speed is 39 miles per hour so there you have it um, the battery percentage again 100% the current alarm some people care about the current now one of my buddies um, his name is Panda he pretty much helped me set this up but he likes to do the peak um, current because in many cases if you're going through bumps and what happens is you, let's say I'm going at 39 miles per hour which is a dangerous speed right if you're unskilled even if you're skilled 39 per 39 miles per hour is pretty much let's say you're going at 39 miles per hour and you hit a bump or dip in the road or some significant pothole at 39 miles per hour nothing's going to happen but if you're over leaning at 39 miles per hour or 38 miles per hour the current draw is going to be pretty significant because what's going to happen is the wheel is going to literally force itself to try to stay up by drawing more current out of the battery but your miles per hour your 38 39 miles per hour is already drawing a ton of current so what happens is in many cases you'll get a cutoff and you'll think it's because you're over leaning well, it, it is because you're overleaning, but it's because you placed the wheel in such a situation where it has to literally overwork itself to try to keep balance in that pothole. So whenever a wheel goes through a pothole, for example, it's literally drawing more current to keep upright. In addition to that, you're overleaning to get that max speed. So that's not an ideal situation for the wheel. You're literally wearing it thin. I have that at zero because I haven't had these situations. Whenever I see bumps, I don't ever lean anyway, but I've hit many bumps in Boston, many potholes, many all, all kinds of things, and nothing's ever happened to me. It had happened to my, uh, my buddy uh, Panda several times, and this is why he likes that um, setting. So what you can do, for example, in his situation, he's been through several bumps, and he had pretty much the current meter running, and he would check to see at what level um, the wheel was drawing current, like how much current the wheel was drawing at that time of the cutoff in the bump while over leaning. It might be 150, it might be 120, whatever. And he would set it to that, the amps. Now in wheel settings, we have light mode, alarm mode. Let's click on alarm mode. I have turn off level one alarm, okay? Now to disable all alarms, you will have to initially do that in the Gotway app. I don't believe that you're able to disable the alarms. That's old information. Right now, you don't need to use the Gotway app to initialize anything. In the past, you had to use the Gotway app or some other similar app to Gotway to initialize certain things. But now with um, uh, the more advanced EUC.world app, you don't need to use Gotway app for anything. You can do whatever you want, everything you need to do within that app without using the Gotway app. Using the WeLog app. You can click it, but I don't think... Initially, you will have to do it on the Gotway app. Um, but right after that, don't use the, app, the Gotway app. It's not that reliable. Okay, my pedal is medium. 
because I like the buffer mode. I'll explain that in another video, the difference between hard, medium, and soft. And the wheel speed limit is zero. That's it, guys. There's nothing else. Okay, so now that I've shown you all of my settings, what I'm going to do now is demonstrate how the wheel alerts you of the speed. So I will head to wheel settings. And actually, you know what? I will head to alarm settings. Alarm settings, and I will bring this down to, let's say, not 39, but let's say 25 miles per hour. So 25 miles per hour, I will lift the wheel and I will allow it to spin up to 25, 26 miles per hour so that you're able to hear the alert, okay? Speed three miles per hour, top speed three. slow down. See that? So whenever it reaches 25 miles per hour, it alerts. Exactly. Slow down. And this is what you'll be hearing in your Bluetooth headset or whatever you decide. Some wheels have speakers on the outside. Um, if you're that type of person that listens to music while riding, then clearly you don't have an earbud. So this would be perfect for you. Blast the music or the volume to 100% or 80% or whatever, and you'll be hearing this. So I have my, I have mine set to um, 39 miles per hour. Let's see. Uh, alarm settings and go down right here and back to 39 and that is sufficient for me so now when I go to 39 miles per hour speed 3 miles per hour Top speed. slow down all right so there you have it obviously you heard the wheel uh, alarm as well which is fine I like having the wheel alarm as a backup. Not that I listen to it, but I do like having it as a backup. So it says 41 miles per hour. That's because it was free spinning with no load. But with load, I weigh 180 pounds. There's no way I'd be able to do 41 miles per hour. But I can definitely do 39 to 40 miles per hour safely. And as promised, here's my calibration video. Welcome back to the channel, guys. And uh, what I'm going to do today is pretty much calibrate the 100-volt um, MS Pro. This is this one. And this is my 84-volt. And basically, one thing I noticed when I got the wheel from Chooch is he had his wheel tilted maybe like 5 degrees, maybe close to 7, maybe. It was pretty, pretty steep. So what I'm going to do today is try to calibrate it uh, closer to my 84 volt. It fits my riding style and hopefully that helps other people out there. So to calibrate, it's very easy. Let me try to record the screen here. Just go to wheel settings in the EUC World app and you'll see calibration. Click on that. And what happens is when you hit start, obviously there's instructions, you could read it but it'll disengage the mortar and that will allow you to, you will hear uh, several beeps. When the beeps stop, it disengages the mortar and you can adjust the wheel however you see fit. So I'm gonna hit start. All right, so the mortar is disengaged. Now the wheel can rock back and forth freely. So what I'm gonna do is use a leveler. All right, this is the leveler. I'm gonna put it on the L bracket of my 84 volt, pretty much center. And it says mine is at 3.1 degrees tilted. That's good. What I'm gonna to try to do is match it. You don't wanna use the pedals because the pedal height or uh, angle is different on the 100 volt. It's a lot steeper. 2.9. So I'll move it. A little more. All right, that should be good. 
Then, when you get to the level you like, push the power button, push it on again, you'll hear several beeps. The beeps will be constant. Turn it off, you're all set. Now, if I take the wheel and I tilt it like this, for example, oh gosh, like this, ah, when you turn on the wheel, it'll pretty much adjust itself to that level you set. Pretty cool. Very cool. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I prefer using the EUC World app compared to the others, but mostly if you use the uh, original app from Gotway, it should be the same. I hope this helped you guys. And if you find your writing style or this doesn't help your writing style, just keep adjusting it until you're happy. Till next time, guys. All right, last video of the night, and I believe that will be it, guys. So I got a situation. My lady needs things from the store. She said she was gonna get it, but I have 15 minutes to go get it and come back. I'm charging. I mean, I'm technically fully charged. Do it? I think I should do it. Plus, the cat needs food. You know what I mean? Hey, cat. Cat. Hey, cat. You need food, right? Yes. All right. So... I'm gonna do it. Horrible quality as usual. Anyway, guys, have a good night. Peace.